and welcome back to another episode of Total Control with Wesker. Today, I thought we'd start a look, start a look, have a look, one of those, on the social groups page, because we've not really looked at this for a while, and I figured that we'd end up with all the players we'd brought in, we'd end up with lots of players being scattered around through this sort of screen, which would make sense, because loads of lone players, loads of new signings and whatnot, but it does seem that Yaya Toure has kind of brought a lot of these lads under his wing, which is very, very nice to see indeed. What's he unhappy with? Probably training? Probably training. It's Yaya Toure. Too much running needed. Point is, though, Musto, I don't think he's on she on loan, though. He might be... I don't know. The point is, though, the likes of Walker Peters, Hernandez, Chong, Woodburn, and Willock are all under his wing. And being a, a highly influential, or team leader, in fact, that has done a massive amount, I think, for bringing everybody together. Each of the groups have got a team leader in them. Some of them have even got some influential players, or highly influential players, particularly this one, which is useful, because obviously Camacho is totally useless. So that is fine. Today, though, it's about Valladolid. This is one of these games that I feel has the potential to be an enormous, gaping banana tree. Banana tree? Banana skin. The banana's been eaten. Our home record is outrageously good at the moment. We've had seven home matches since we switched over the tactics. We've won five of them. Even games we probably shouldn't have been. Well, not shouldn't have, but like you wouldn't expect us to. We drew another one, which was against Valencia, I think, and we lost one. And even the one we lost, the one against Celta Vigo, I thought we were unlucky to lose that match. Our home record has been absolutely terrific, which means inevitably, when we actually play a team who are far, far worse than us for the first time in a while, we will inevitably bugger it up. But hopefully we can mitigate that. I just want to not lose, to be honest, because I feel like if we can avoid defeat, we at least don't lose ground to them. That, that's the main thing. If we can just keep them below us, that's really all we need to do for the rest of the season. But it's going to be difficult. And this is one of the games I've earmarked as us being a must win. Although admittedly, we bought ourselves a little bit of leeway with that victory against Villarreal and the victory away at Espanyol. Although I think I talked about that after the Espanyol game. So really, with those, I've earmarked four home games to come. Those four games against teams down at the bottom, as well as the one against Alavés on the final day. Those are must win matches. Or at least get... Uh, 10 points from those 12 potentially if we draw against one that would be fine i think 10 points from those might well be enough to keep us up by itself most of us picked up a ban not a big deal because obviously we can bring back my man ibrahim amadou who's played pretty damn well for us since he came in on loan i think it was a decent signing don't really know what the huge differences was and it probably isn't all down to him but i feel like i trust him more still not sure what to do about whether to bring back Senior or jose hell i don't know via the lead are at home to athletic club two all draw okay not the end of the world it's dropped points, I suppose, but it's also a point gain for them. I feel like they probably would have lost that normally against Athletic, but I think Athletic are in poor form. I don't know. That, that's the excuse I'm given. We just weren't very good against Sevilla. We focused a lot down the left wing, which usually means we play well, but we just did not turn up on the night, unfortunately. Huampi was particularly poor um, in this game, I feel like, as well. Although Galan... I don't know, we just weren't very good. The, goal, the first goal we conceded was just poor defensively and the mistake from Galan. And the second one was just one of those free kicks where I, I don't know, really. 3-1 Levante. Okay, that's... I mean, it does push Levante further away from us, admittedly. But the main thing is it keeps compounding the pressure on Girona. And it means that our game in hand now um, over them as well would actually, if we were to beat Vitaly, we'd actually move above Girona as well on the counts of us beating them 4-0 earlier this year. So we've actually put another team between us and the relegation zone. And I think that's kind of the main thing. Get above a couple of teams if we can do. Because... That means more teams have got to perform better. Okay, so training obviously was set up for this, but I want to do a kind of similar thing here for the Valencia game, in all honesty. Just get a match prep one of teamwork, because I like a bit of teamwork, and swap these out for defending corners and defending set pieces from specifically free kicks. Although, admittedly, I think... I don't know what it is. I think we're just so bad that no matter how much... This one used to work quite well with Stockport and Bologna. Putting a few of these ones in tended to stem the tide a little bit, but it doesn't seem to be doing that. But I'm going to keep doing it because cognitive bias. Plus, I don't think we need any massive sessions in here. Just try to focus on keeping the players in fresh condition. We can go back to the more nuanced stuff before the Leganes game because that is going to be a crazy important one for us. That should, in theory, be a, a nailed-on six points. But depending on what happens against Valladolid and Valencia, our form or morale could be completely tips top topsy-turvy by then so they want us to move to attacking as it happens which i mean i don't think i'd go attacking but positive is probably what we're gonna go we're not gonna go uncautious are we i mean they're expecting us to win this easily but i just i don't know i have this niggling thought in the back of my head that these are the kind of games that you just inevitably lose he doesn't believe that we've got what it takes to stay up mate we're ahead of you pipe down it's gonna be cool to have a uh, jorge Polito playing against us as long as he don't do anything like score lord why hast thou forsaken me so we're going to play a slightly uh, sort of... We're going to reduce the training really low so that there's no real opportunity for anyone to get injured because that would be silly. But luckily, Huampi's found a way anyway. Um, twisting painfully during a training session. There was barely any training session, so what were you doing? Like, he twisted awkwardly while putting his boots on reaching for a cheese sandwich. Like, what? Oh, 
God. That is about the worst thing that could possibly happen right now. He's been our best player the entire season. Even when we were bad, he was our best player. With 11 assists and 5 goals. And now he's going to miss not only this game, but potentially 3 or 4 more games. It could even be more than that. I... car. So this is what I was saying before. I thought if we get another raft of injuries, it could really be the death of us. But we've got Chong. But he's just nowhere near as good as Wampy. Uh, and now Batista got a chance to play against Katafe. Watch them win this. Yep. I don't think it's that surprising, really. Hatafe are on dreadful form, and now Betis are above us as well. And that pushes us back into 18th spot. And now we've got the same number of points as Betis as well. We really need to beat Valladolid here. There is absolutely no excuse for not winning this match now. We have to, because it would put us back out of the relegation zone, and we really just have to fight against Betis now, because Valladolid, if we win this game... We oh, my God. It would start to get very interesting, though, between these teams here. By beating Getafe, they have at least pulled them back towards us, but they've also helped themselves, too. And could this be the beginning of Betis finally turning a corner? But, hmm. Okay, so in theory, they should want us to go positive here. Yes, they do. Okay, good. Hit early crosses. Go on. Yes. Uh, low crosses? No. Oh. Looking at their system, I do wonder if low crosses is actually the best option, but then Hernandez isn't great in the air. We we'll play around with it during the game. I don't know. High line of engagement. Okay, they like the idea of that as well. So it seems we're on the right track here. A lot of games beforehand because it's midweek. So what have we got that's of importance to us? There's Leganes and Vi Viacano are kind of out of our way now. It's mainly Leganes and Levante here. A one-all draw. Wow, Leganes actually gained a point. Uh, although admittedly, you could argue that they actually lost a point, really. Um, Levante's late equaliser, it doesn't help Leganes. They're done. But the Girona game against Sociedad, that's going to be a really difficult one for them. Hopefully, that will compound their misery. And if we win and they lose, that will be a good day for us. No injuries at all. Oh, no. Michel's doubtful with the flu. Um, well, I, they probably won't play him, less risking it spreading to the rest of the squad during the match. Okay, so Musta obviously can't play, but we weren't going to play him anyway. That's fine by me. Juanpi, I'm gutted about this. So, so gutted. But Tathe Chong, he, he's going to have to get a run of games and he's going to have to find some form. I'm still... I felt like, like Ho, Ho Engel was particularly poor against Sevilla. And I do wonder if maybe bringing Luisinho back for one game just to try him out because he's got slightly better morale. Might not be the end of the world. Everybody else, though, pretty content. Plus, there's a nice link here as well. That's that's what I'm willing to go with for now. Plus, Luisinho's got a much better long throw, I think. As for the bench, we're going to go with Mango, Walker Peters, Willock, Gaia, Costas, Rivera, and, of course, Ben Woodburn. Okay, that's fine. Let's see what they're going to do then. Like, that system, we've not played against this system. I wonder if there's a way we can have a look at our formations faced because I think we kind of need to. Because I like looking at other teams' ones, but I don't think we've played against this system probably in a while. Cautious and highly structured. They've got a deep line playmaker in Alcaraz. They've got Herviash. I'm guessing they're going to sit pretty deep. Because he did a lot from crosses, so that could definitely help us if they're going to put crosses in a lot. That's probably going to be our best bet. Maybe sitting a bit deeper could actually work for us as well. Draw them out a little bit. I don't understand how Ed Shetter's aerial ability is going to help us score goals from crosses. Unless they genuinely mean from corners. Analyst report. So they didn't play like that against Athletic. They played a, a bit more of an attacking option. Did they play? Okay, so they played it against Real. Often went through the middle. I guess that's not a huge surprise. Uh, but again, we don't have... It was their 54 long balls, passing network. Really, really wide. But again, it's a different system, so it's hard to say. It feels like with a system like this, it's going to be them getting the ball and trying to hit balls over the top for NSU now. That seems to be the only way they could really score, unless they get the likes of Kiko and Herviash forward. They can see a lot from crosses on the left. Generally speaking, we're pretty good down the left, and when we do well, we do well down the left. Against high-rated teams, to be fair, they concede more chances than they create, although against similar-rated teams, it's, it's about 50-50, so that's kind of what we're looking at here. So looking at our so far this season. So we played this one time, and we started this one. So we've actually created more chances with this system than we put... What? No lower-rated teams? All right. Formations faced. Where are we really vulnerable? Herviash. I mean, let's see. Top goal scorer is Enesu now. I mean, that makes sense. He's their striker. Kiko's got the most assists, so maybe pressing in on Kiko a little bit. But then also Herviash is going to be cutting us inside as an inverted winger, uh, presumably allowing some space for Nacho. Kiko also dribbles an awful lot. Uh, Alcaraz was their deep line playmaker, I think, wasn't he? Yeah. So we'll probably leave that as it is, since he's going to be the one that's presumably going to provide passes. Don't know if I really want to go in too hard on this random defender here. <laughs> I don't know. Something about this doesn't feel right. That's all I'm going to say right now. It just doesn't feel right. And we might have to do a lot of stuff on the fly in this game, I feel like. Because we've not played against this style before. I wonder if maybe low crosses is a bad idea, because they're going to be sitting deeper, it would seem. To be perfectly honest with you, I think the thing that scares me about this game the most, other than the fact that it feels like one of those banana skins, is their system. Because, generally speaking, we've come up against either this system, or this system, with the DM being an AM, and occasionally slight variations on it. 
this looks like a team that are genuinely come here to try and defend against us, which generally doesn't happen. And I'm concerned that we might not be able to break them down. Things I have potentially in the back pocket, I feel like maybe if they're going to play so deep, low crosses isn't going to happen for us because obviously they're just going to block them all the time. However... We could also try working the ball into the box if they're going to give us so much of the ball ourselves. And we can try and work it through a little bit, maybe. I don't know. This is a huge, huge match. Got to keep an eye on the Girona game as well. Honestly, if we just don't lose, even if it's a really tight game and we can't break them down or whatever, as long as we don't lose, I think that's kind of what matters to me here, really. But we do need everybody to at least play well. That's kind of the key thing. As long as they put in solid performances. Massive. So they're definitely hitting them long balls. Right, Luisinho, no header here. Oh, you start. It's begun. It has begun. He's completely on his own, and he's decided to head the ball for seemingly no reason. Well, that's a good ball for Hervia. She's going to cut into the midfield here. They're going to be looking for balls through continuously to try and find Ennis Unal, and they've... Oh, for God's sake. <sighs> when in doubt, they don't even need a shot to score a bloody goal. That is ridiculous. I'm so sick of... Um, look at this. Oh, what are you doing, you absolute melon? Do you remember that part where I said this was going to be a banana skin? It looks like it's the whole goddamn banana tree. I mean, weirdly, it hasn't updated this thing over here, but it will do inevitably. That usually doesn't mean anything specific. I feel like the lack of outball we're going to have with, with a complete lack of whampy is a real problem for us. For a player that's supposed to be pressed intensely, Hervey actually seems to be getting an awful lot of time on the ball. I do wonder if actually trying to mark him, maybe, might not be such a bad idea. Go on. Mm, number six just didn't really push out there. Hervey Ash. He feels like a potential danger man for them. After even five minutes. I believe the phrase sickener was kind of made for situations like this. We've really dug ourselves a hole now. A Carpo who's been pretty solid for the most part this season. Um, at times he's flailed a little bit. Go on, Ashata. Give it, dig, dig, dig us out a good ball. Not really, but that's fine. It's a poor clearance by them. We should be able to just recycle the possession. Luisinho on the wrong side of the pitch here, so we do need to be careful. But that does mean we're overloading the right here, potentially. Malero, into the channel for Chong. Only one man in the box, though. Does go back for a Carpo. Go on, get a good cross. Cleared away again. Look, they're so, so deep. That's the problem. Oh, slips it through for... Hernandez, he's not going to be able to do much here other than nothing, actually, in fact. But I think the issue is when we get the ball into promising areas, they are sitting fairly deep, and it's really preventing it because they've got withdrawn wingers there's not like instead of sitting here he's sitting here and it means that these channels are being completely cut off and we're really struggling to get into those wide areas luisinho ball across and chong oh better it's a bit more like it but that was because it wasn't a low cross and i think we might need to turn off low crosses here oh a capo top space here and it's deflected out for a corner to us there's not actually been a shot yet in 16 minutes and we're one nil down explain that one science Luisinho's ball in. That's a dreadful, dreadful ball, but Amadou will fish that one away. I honestly wonder if this is one of these games where working the ball into the box could actually work for us. Because at the moment, we're just lumping balls into nobody and it ain't having any effect. We've got a lot of possession. Let's use some of it. Luisinho, chong! First chance of the game and it's it's wide. Okay, yeah, that, that did not work. I'm going to go to whipped crosses. Cause a bit of danger. I think that's what we need to do. Somehow in this game, also, by the way, Sociedad score, which I guess is good. We're 40 minutes into this match and there's been one shot in the entire game and it was us. Chong, header again, saved by Massip. Well, we're a goal down and they've not had a single shot. Possessions really flow back towards them towards the end of the half too. But that might be because of the uh, poor tactical change I just made there. I think we need to just get some more dangerous balls into the box right now. Malera suffered a little injury. So, half time. They've had no shots and they lead. If we lose this game and they have no shots, I might just delete FM19. I might just delete it entirely. It's going out to Kiko instead, and maybe, in fact, we should stop marking up Hervia, unless that's the reason why, and maybe actually go after this side of the pitch instead and really try and press, because that seems to be their main outlet. Maybe we should just turn off all of that and just give him a bit more free-flowing. He is a bit hampered by an injury. Okay, and so is Torre looking a bit knackered too. Where is your passion? Exactly. This is utter insanity. I don't think I've ever ha got to half-time in a game, been 1-0 down, with the other team not having a single shot from a defensive standpoint, we've actually been pretty bloody excellent. Like, it's from a, an overall standpoint, you, you can't really deny that getting to half time without any shots conceded is a pretty damn good result. It's just the fact that we've managed to concede a goal out of it. Javi Moyano, that's a bit more like it. Getting into them a bit more. That's better. Luisinho's got it now. Look long, maybe. Look at that. Mm, there was a ball through here, and now he's found it. Hernandez is in. He's got a score. 
Yes! Juan Hernandez gives us, I think that's a deserved equaliser. What a ball through from Yaya Torre. That is a top-notch ball. This was on. The moment Luisino wins this here, there's suddenly this little gap as they've shifted across. Torre does look up, sees it over the top. Hernandez finally makes the run I wanted, and that is an excellent finish. That's the goal he should have scored against Sevilla, but he didn't, and he has today. Huge moment. Come on. Then, with only one striker as well, they can't deal with both of our centre-backs. So they're allowing us to come, up with, come out from the back with it here. In Sua, just letting it come all the way through. I think they got a bit overzealous, if anything. Oh, Hernandez is in again, and it nearly was 2-1 there. Great chance. Probably could have done better with it. Gontan. And it's wide. Their first shot. 61 minutes, and they've had a shot. I don't want to push for this, just in case we end up doing something stupid. Puts it across the pitch. Right, go on, win this. There we go. Gaios picked it up. He's got to look over the top for Hernandez. Hernandez needs to make a run. He's got to do it at some point. Go on. There he goes. Hernandez is through again. Oh, five minutes to go. And honestly, I feel like we probably deserve the win. Like, we've limited them to no shots on target. I mean, what more can you do? Luisinho, other than not concede an own goal, I suppose. Hernandez. Malero. Oh. And somehow they've... How did they lose the ball there? We've created chances. We've been much, much better in the second half. We've, we've got a deserved equaliser. Brilliant. But we deserve to win this match. It's been a very tight game, but we've created a lot of chances out of very little in terms of actual shot numbers. Gaillard, ball across, and Woodburn! Yes! Come on! Ben Woodburn, Wesker 2, Valladolid 1. Of all the people to pop up with a goal, it's Ben Goddamn Woodburn. Alex Gaillard with the assist, and if we win this now, which we'd have to deserve it, really. Guy, what a ball in that is, but what a finish from Ben Woodburn. A volley at the back post. Bang! It's 2-1 to Wesker. Come on! I might switch it to Cautious in a minute. I'm not sure. We're 2-1 up now against Valladolid. This would be an enormous victory. Considering the position we were sort of in in this match. Go on, Woodburn. Go on, Hernandez. Oh, what was that? Time wasting frequently. As much as is physically possible, lads. Go on. Luis Senio, huge header. Guy does well to get around there. We're sat. We've got everybody back in the right positions. Moyano, get your blocks in, lads. Well tackled. Given away the corner, but so what? We would go 15th with this victory, and it would be a goddamn deserved one too. And Yovan, they've had a shot on target. 93 minutes it took them to have a shot on target. They don't deserve anything from this match. Alcaraz. Into the space here for Herviash. Uh-oh. Just get yourself set, lads. Moyano, don't let him get the shot. Well played. Well played from Joe Willock. Get that ball out. One minute remaining. Every chance you get, clear that ball like your life depends on it. Because it kind of does. Gaillard, do not fuck. Do not mess this up, Alex. Oh, what a ball. Just run this to the corner flag now. Gonzalo. And it's a free kick. That's huge. Joaquin pulls him down. And that will surely just kill off the final 20 seconds of this match. Luis, you know, to dink one to the back post, surely. Or just hold on to it for as long as you can, mate. You know what to do. Dinks it in. And it's cleared away. But that should do it. Yes! Come on! That is an absolutely massive result. Holy crap. At halftime, this game looked like it was going to be one of the worst matches I think I've ever played on FM. And we've turned it around. Juan Hernandez with the equaliser, but Ben Woodburn playing out of position on the right-hand side as an inside forward on his wrong foot. Scores with his with his weaker foot, I think, or maybe his strong foot, I don't know, to give us a 2-1 victory at home against Valladolid. And now we are 15th in the league and have got 27 points on the board and two more teams below us. Come on! That is so amazing. Oh, God just insanity not just to get the victory but to come from behind and get the victory after all the odds of what that that opening goal did to us to come back and do that is so so good two games in hand and by a lead a four point lead we've got 12 points from our last four matches that home win there could be the one that i think that could be the one that sets us on the path to safety i, I genuinely think that we're going to survive now I, I believe it now i believe we're right in the battle with loads of other teams so so happy malero's injured that's a shame but my god Oh, dearie me. Look at the form as well. Look at that, really. Four wins out of our last five matches. And we barely conceded any goals at the moment. We conceded a goal against Espanyol, which was a free kick, I think. I oh, know we lost to Sevilla, of course, yeah. But again, we scored their goal today. What a moment. Anyway, if you enjoyed this episode, and I really hope you have, drop a like. That'd be gorgeous. And if you're new to the channel, subscribe, and I will see you guys soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.